actually Liz Higgins. Liz, <coughs> you stand up. She is the new Gloria. <laughs> and uh, she's already moving quickly to put her own stamp on this job. Uh, so uh, I appreciate you joining us. And now I know you're not going to remember all of this, but uh, why don't we start with just introducing you and your precinct. Charlie Trask at Precinct 8. I'm Charlie. Gina and Russell, Precinct 4. Hi. Mary Margaret Frank Lamont, Precinct 5. Steve DeCourcy, Precinct 2. Daryl Harmer, Precinct 12. Alan Jones, 14. John Wallach, 7. Grant Gibbons, 17. Dean Carver, 20. Dave McKenna, 21. Rohit Duvai, 18. Dick Fanning, 15. Thomas Kakabaro, 11. Okay, so anybody who didn't say anything, they're absent. <laughs> mark, mark them down. Okay. Thank uh, you. Now, uh, as you probably are aware, our email uh, area has become more complex uh, because of the Warren article that was passed, and I guess it's just the trend that things are coming in. So uh, Liz made up a new contact list that has both your email, both your personal emails and your town email addresses. So the first thing is I'm gonna hand this around. Please look at your contact information, make sure it's accurate, and then Liz will update it and send it around to everybody so everybody's on board with this. Uh, Liz, if, if you, uh, and, and if it looks fine, just check it. So, uh, and then Liz, call anybody who wasn't checked and just touch bases with them so we can have a final uh, final list. So, uh, on emails, now uh, for, for many years you might have noticed that when I send out an email list to the whole finance committee, down the bottom it said something to the effect, uh, on the CC it was uh, a tosty at the town. So I, I had my own personal email um, address at the town, but all I used it for was storage of emails. Uh, so I think what I'm going to do, at least for, you know, you've got a couple choices that Adam uh, put you, uh, that sent to you. Um, I think what I'm going to do, at least for the, for the mid-time, is going to continue to use my personal email, but CC the town email. So anytime we are emailing back and forth, either as a group or individuals, if it's town business, you need to make sure that your, this email is stored on the town, on your town email list. Uh, so you either go in and use the town email, your town email, or if you continue to use your own personal, you've got to put a CC town email address, and that way the contact is, is saved um, on that. So, uh, you know, maybe as people get more used to it, different, that's how I'm starting. I might change as we get further, as we get further into it. Any questions? Uh, and the woman is Sue. Sudisler. Sudisler. So if you have any questions, you know, please give her a call uh, on it. Now, all emails from me should go to my town email address, though, not my personal one, just so I don't miss anything from anybody. Okay, so uh, uh, anyway, that, that's, that's the parameters. Uh, it's, it's a bit of a new world. Uh, okay. Now, I'm going to, a uh, little miscommunication, um, but we have uh, three people who showed up for uh, a Warren article that I thought was scheduled for next week, but since they're already here, I don't see any particular reason um, not to go through it. So, uh, I think this is Article 37. No. So, if everybody could go to Article 37. Okay, this is appropriation for public art. Now, you remember when East Arlington was being done, uh, we made an appropriation, picking a number, I think it was 15,000, to hire a consultant to help get the process rolling for public art. Last year, though, we voted no uh, action on an appropriation of actually creating it, basically taking the position uh, that while we're happy to get it started, uh, the actual work has to be done through private fundraising. Um, so that's what we did now. Now, Adam, do you want to give a brief summary or how, however you guys want to do it on 
this article? Uh, I'll say a few things and then maybe you can talk a little bit about your plans going forward. Um, so to build on what um, Al just said, so I think it was two fiscal years ago, the committee appropriated $15,000. We hired a public art consultant, Cecily Miller, with that money. Uh, and then also, as Al said, we came back and asked for additional funding to actually implement the public art project. Um, and I'm sorry to just be repeating you, but the committee said, no, you know, why don't we see what we can do with grants and private fundraising. Cecily, working with um, Arlington Public Art, um, uh, the attendees we have here tonight, raised that money via private fundraising and grants and implemented the uh, public art project that we saw in East Arlington earlier this year, the East Arlington. A lot of the storefronts and uh, building facades. Uh, it was temporary, uh, as you've seen, it's since pe peeled off and gone away. Um, and the group has now come back, and I've supported it, put it as part of my budget, asking for an additional or a new $15,000 uh, to once again contract with a consultant to do a further planning process for further public art work uh, in Arlington. So I, if it's all right with you, maybe they can talk a little bit about the project. Sure. But uh, who's ever going to say, if they want to go to the front seat, give a, uh, what you're planning to do? Fine. Um, so thank you for hearing us out. Um, so we are uh, <coughs> hoping to you know, work with another public art consultant uh, for some efforts along the bike path, um, some temporary projects on the bike path that we are uh, hoping will connect um, Arlington Center with the Capitol Square area and that will uh, support our work toward um, the, the cultural district designation to the Mass Cultural Council. So that in itself uh, won't bring any money with it, the cultural district designation, but it will allow us um, as a town to apply for much bigger fundraising, uh, much bigger, rather, um, grants that are out there, like the Adams Grant through Mass Cultural Council and other things like that. So. Um, Projects along the bike path are are one idea, and um, we're hoping you know to, to to think of some other ways um, as we move forward. Did you guys want to say anything else? Um, just to say, just to mention that not only was the East Arlington Stories project um, a project that was done by Cecily Miller, but also there was the It's Your Move project in Spy Pond, which was a day of interactive play and community art making. Also the Fox Festival, which was um, which engaged the community and lots of children in creating uh, fox masks from paper mache and involved employing another professional artist who was adept at that. And then um, being, you know, enhancing the piece to the east, kind of making it more lively and colorful with uh, music and fox masks. So all of those projects uh, Cecily Miller did over the last year, uh, working with East Arlington. The bike path uh, are, is something that we have already have under underway, uh, in the sense that we've already talked to a number of artists about some ideas. And, um, and we also <coughs> have a cultural council grant to move forward on a small portion of it. But um, Cecily, in order to keep Cecily engaged, in, we need to be able to pay her as well. And I'm sure, being a creative and community-minded person that she is, that um, there may be other ideas that come up too for enlivening our streetscape um, because of the number of connections that she has too with artists and some of them whose ideas we spoke to and saw uh, possibilities for other settings. Okay, so, so basically this is following a similar pattern Oh, the 15000 you're requesting here is for consultant to help organize, yeah. and then you'll raise money through grants and private uh, donations. Exactly. Okay. Well, I have questions from the committee. Dick, have you, have you got any money now? <coughs> have you any money now? We have some money in our... How much? I think last looking at it was about 6000 10 6 6 uh, Oh, 6 Six thousand. Okay, is that left over from the fifteen, or is that uh, other monies no, that you? No, no, no. That's not. No, it was nothing to do with the fifteen. That was from what we raised in fundraising. Oh, your fundraising. Okay. And also what Cecily raised in grants. Yeah, Cecily 
rights grants and she raised the equivalent of what she was given in salary and grants to implement these art projects. Okay. Uh, Tom? So is it fair to say every time we move to a different section of the town, we have to get a consultant? I mean, this is a professional job. This is a lot of coordination. It's a ton of work. Um, I don't think it's a job for volunteers. I don't have the expertise. So it is fair to say you might be back here for, now, for two years now looking for more money for a consultant for an elevator uh, It's possible. So let me, it might be more of a comment or a question, but let me attack what he said in a different way. Is um, rather than, at least for a finance committee, having to figure it out on an annual basis and then decide that this is becoming frustrating and whatnot, I think it would be easier um, if we understood what the longer term goal is here. So if you think Arlington was the first phase, and then this is your second phase, and is there a third, fourth, and fifth, or is there a third, or is it done, or how do you, you know, how does it get visualized as a, as a larger effort? I think that's sort of the, the question out there. Right. Well, it's, it's a work in progress. I think, you know, since Arlington Public Art started about, in about 2010, with a group of people that wanted to see more public art, more public engagement kinds of art projects going on in Arlington. Um, we had no money at all to work with, and it was a group of volunteers. Um, and we, you know, did fundraising projects. Chair for Where You Sit was the first one. It's been a successful one over the years. And so, um, you know, through that time, we've worked very hard to educate the public and bring people along and get more public engagement as we moved along. So it's gotten bigger, and we've gotten a lot of positive feedback for what we're doing in the town. Um, so it's hard to say. Um, we're, we're, I think, you know, getting the cultural district designation might, might start to help us. And uh, I'm, I, as well as Cecil, we're both on the um, cultural commission. And so we're working Stephanie. together. Ste <coughs> Steph Stephanie. Stephanie. Exactly. Ste Stephanie is, <laughs> sorry, Stephanie here is, is, is with me on the cultural commission. And that's something that we're all talking about, too. So. It's kind of a work in progress. It's not clear if we will come back, but it, it is clear that if we want something well done, somebody needs to be hired to organize it. That's what we're, that's what we're all about here. The Cultural Commission is working on a cultural plan also with some professional consultants. Um, then, and in, in, in doing that, we don't know what the outcome of the plan will be yet, but by June we will know, but part of the goals is is to set you know, long-term goals and the mechanisms in which to carry out those goals and to consolidate um, all the arts organizations and our arts agenda. So we are, we are working on that, but all of this has come out of you know, numerous public, public meetings over several years, and it's just gained more and more momentum. And so I would say you know, our, our public art in town, along with uh, arts and culture activities, the increase of arts and culture activities is is a long-term goal overall, and we will come up with probably a sustainable way of doing that. But, but yeah. I, can, I just, can, I, can, I just, can I say one more thing? So, if, but even if you said you don't know what the next phase would be, right? You would have to have somewhat of an idea on what portion of the town would, I don't want to say qualify, but would be suitable for a public arts project, right? I mean, because if I think about the number of um, residential streets in the town, you just drive up and down the residential streets, I can't imagine putting a public arts project right. in the middle of a residential street, right? So in some ways, you could be limited, right? I mean, outside of, and tell me if I'm wrong, but really outside of Mass Ave, Broadway, the bike path, and maybe some pockets here or there, are there really any large-scale places you could? Could be some of the parks, it could be well, the driveway, it could be, you know, an open spaces generally lend themselves um, and and buildings you know commercially sides and murals on sides of buildings such as we had in East Arlington but you're right I mean I'd say the bulk of it would happen along Mass Ave certainly not not on private property or residential streets except for people which so Mass Ave Broadway bike path Mass parks, Ave Broadway bike space. path park oh yes generally so we've already I mean, covered East Arlington theoretically yeah. and the bike path yeah. okay 
like to add? Yeah, so I think <coughs> perhaps Adrian's being polite because I'm sitting here, but Adrian, uh, Stephanie, and Lori and others have asked me, I think every year for the past five years, to include either a part time or even full time town position to focus on. And though I'm very supportive of the efforts that have been put forth over the years, I've always said no. That with all of the other needs being balanced in the operating budget, that I didn't think a full-time full position was appropriate. That, but that in this approach, the finance committee, me, the finance committee, or the town meeting ultimately could say yes, yes, but not anymore at some point without having to lay off or eliminate a position. <coughs> so I think that is a little bit of why you've taken this approach, um, because you you've thought a more set or you know uh, structured approach would be better but this is a way to still get some things done in, in the absence of that uh, approach. Now the uh, uh, one comment and then a question for you to research I'll be curious is uh, I know the JC's I think it was back in the 70s raised money for the Uncle Sam statue and that's that's a big work uh, of bronze so that had to be expensive but uh, I think they did it back in the 70s as their major project. Junior JCs, it was a, yeah. it was a young group. But uh, I'd be interested if, if there's records any place, where did they get most of their money? Because I have a feeling it didn't come in five and $10 amounts. Somebody had to contribute a lot of money. And I want to do the same thing about the, uh, oh, this is embarrassing, Dallin. The Dallin Works, the flagpole, pole, uh, the uh, the Indian, the uh, uh, you know major works in Arlington Center. I wonder how they were funded. I, I would have to think that you know somebody with substantial f funds came up came Robin's up. Robin's family. It was Robin's family. Yeah, they did. You know, commissioned Cyrus Dallin for all the wonderful pieces of Okay, so that came from the yeah, family. Yeah. Okay, yeah. just curious. And those were different times, different places, and I mean, different worlds where, you know, the, down, the, the Robbins family wanted those things there, and they didn't need to ask, they just did it, so. Yeah. That's really good, yeah. Um, okay, are there any other, Charlie? <coughs> have, have you thought about taking this money and instead of uh, spending it on doing a project on the bike path, trying to set up a permanent, uh, independent group with a strong internal fundraising machine so that you could continuously raise private funds and you know get get some independent momentum. We would love that would be too, great. but again who's paying the salaries because I don't think that the volunteers I mean I think the volunteers have already maxed out their volunteer yes we do have a lot of people but I don't think that we can run it without any permanent staff at all. I mean thinking volunteers can certainly be part of it and I'm okay, saying use the money to yeah. hire somebody to get an organization going that raises its own money, that perpetuates itself. Right. Well, to pay, I see what you're saying. To, to pay, pay, pay professionals, money. yeah. Okay. I think that's something that could come out of a cultural plan that we're, you know, having done. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay, are there any other, Stephen? <coughs> yeah, a couple, couple of quick. First, first of all, as a, as a resident of East Arlington, the, the, the project down there was very well received and did a great job on it. Um, but it, just a question on the type of projects because Ellen mentioned the Dental Sam statue. My understanding is you're looking at things that might be like seasonal or annual projects that may not, Temporary. they're not permanent right. type. Um, Mostly because so, of the fundraising involved because anything that's permanent is in the six figures. I mean, it's just the, for the materials and the space and the time and the space and everything else involved. It's just very, very expensive. So we are looking at temporary. I think a couple of reasons. I think, um, first of all, it's um, exciting to see new things come and you know, <coughs> help out. Um, you know, public art it take, uh, these days is, is not just statues. Um, you know, if, if you look at downtown Boston and all the interesting things that come one season that are gone the next, the big thing across the Greenway, but it brings so much tourism and so you know so many people out to look at art and to respond to art in a different way than just going into a museum and you know looking at something on a wall. I mean, it's just great what's going on right now. So we really wanted our to be part of that. Um, and also, so, so, it, so temporary pieces are exciting, and, um, and no one has to live with, the, with them forever. You know, you can have something turn over. 
And it, and I don't think we're ready yet as a, as a community to decide to spend six figures on a piece of public art. Right. I, I, I don't think yeah. that's not where we are right now. Right. So. Okay. And, and when you, just as you go forward in this process and closer to town meeting, I mean, I think the idea that to have an outside consultant who actually is your grant writer, yes. if there's more information that you can provide with them, what type of return the grant writer provides on that, because I think from, from conversations I've had with you, the grant writer really is a key to the, oh or the successfully your outside consultant yes. is a key it's to your the grants. Key to the grant. exactly. Yeah, so exactly. I think to the extent that you can provide more information on that, 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 that would be helpful on it. So one question for Adam on, on this, is, is there any, Project Adam in town, whether it's on the bike path or, or in a park, that could qualify for CPA funds um, that that perhaps they could apply for as part of that process. It, if it's a you know in open space, it's a good question. I don't I don't think CPA could pay for the park itself. Okay. I guess if there was an improvement or change or upgrade we were making to the bike path or a park and we wanted to incorporate. <laughs> I don't think we could just take CPA money to commission whatever it might be, some kind of sculpture or whatnot. But, but it could be together. So, okay. Okay, are there any other? Alan? I'd like to um, just go back to basics for a second and give uh, the manager and the committee the opportunity to just reiterate for the committee and, and the uh, millions of viewers uh, the value <laughs> of public art and you know why the taxpayers should fund it. Uh, just, just, so just, just to review that, what's the value of public art, and why should the taxpayers fund? <laughs> Come on, okay. <coughs> Tell me your pitch. Okay. Um, well, there's so the first one is there is an economic benefit. Usually, it does boost the local economy. It brings visitors. It makes the town more interesting for people to live in, but it also makes the town more interesting for visitors to visit and those then they patronize the restaurants and they, they pop into the stores and things like that. So it tends to help on that regard. It also gives the community an opportunity to um, come out into the public, engage with each other, engage with a piece of art that, that has to do with their history or their identity. Or So it gives, um, it gives a sense of identity to the, and community place and it also can help express a sense of place of a certain town or a certain place in town so you could have something in in Robbins Farm Park which which it relates to that um, beautiful skyline or it could it could relate to the um, the history of that park or something about that dog statue that disappeared really like, you know, it could be anything that relates to that place that helps people to remember to celebrate to talk about, to ask questions about, to engage, and then it brings the community together. Okay. Mr. Manager, ask you the same question? I, I would say it's it's quality of life. It's people live here, they, they pay taxes for any number of services, and I, I think more and more the residents of Arlington see as part of the, the broad picture of quality of life, arts and culture. And, and I think making reasonable, you know, measured investments in arts and culture are our wise expenditure of taxpayer funds. Okay, are there any other questions? Okay, so I assume we could uh, cancel our... Yeah, I'll ask. Um, I just had a quick question. So you mentioned the cultural designation. How does that work? Is that like an application? Do you have to have a certain number of people come to your, see your stuff? Like, what is that? Um, we, sure. We, um, it is a designation from the Massachusetts Cultural Council, and we have already applied for it. There is a managing partnership in place, which includes um, several businesses and nonprofit organizations and um, town entities as well in a partnership to run that district and they have they made the application and the MCC has done a site visit and we are just waiting for their verdict. Okay, and then when they hopefully approve that, yeah. you could you could apply for a greater grant. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And I just want to reiterate that um, our previous consultant, Cecily Miller, brought in uh, the equivalent of what she was paid for her job. So it was an incredible job of fundraising, grants from the Mass Cultural Council, from New England Foundation for the Arts, um, from the Arlington Cultural Council, and then some money from um, the Friends of the Fox Library, So, uh, it, and also a private donation. So, but that's the kind of thing that volunteers simply cannot do in that kind of way. So it's just been... Um, 
really great experience to work with her and to see the kind of things that she did um, to create these these projects that she did. So a tremendous amount of talking to the people who live here and asking, what do you value about your town? What do you like to see? What would be, uh, you know, what's special about Arlington? And that's the kind of public art. It's not just plopping down a statue someplace that somebody decided they liked, but it's responding. It's responding to the community, and that's that's what we're all about. That's what we really, we really want to see here. Okay, any other any other questions? Okay. So I'm assuming now we can cancel the seven forty five on Wednesday meeting. Yep. Okay. <laughs> okay, so uh, once again this is a request for fifteen thousand dollars <coughs> our consultant Arlington Center projects and then you'll raise the actual money to do the work. Uh, just a quick question. I, I probably asked you this before. Are the uh, boxes in the center that are getting painted, is that part of your group? That is, yes, yes. Okay, because that's cool. <laughs> uh, okay, well, thank you very much for coming, and uh, uh, we'll get back to you. Okay, thanks, okay. thanks very much. Thank you. If anybody wants to sort of shove around to the side now to be balanced, or tell you, when the Finance Committee comes into this room, does the machinery all of a sudden start making more noise? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. We'll get you for that. Okay. Um, Mr. Manager, could you review the current status of the long-term plan? Uh, what's there and what's happening? Well, I am going to ask Sandy Poole and the Deputy Town Manager to walk through the We'll both answer any questions. Committee might have. Well, since this, this is my first time addressing the committee about the long range plan, I figured I'd create quite a buzz. <laughs> <laughs> so, you all have the document in front of you. I told you not to hire one. <laughs> it's too late, Alice. Too late. Um, <laughs> And what this reflects are the numbers that we know uh, past two significant events. One is the manager's budget coming out, and two is the governor's uh, FY18 budget proposal. So we made adjustments to um, the state aid numbers, and I'll go into that in a little bit of detail in a second. Um, and we have an exact match in the long-range plan for FY18 with what's in the manager's budget, which you've all received. Um, and then we've uh, made some tweaks to other things like uh, state assessments and uh, insurance and some of the Warren articles. Uh, so th those are in the big picture the, the big changes. Um, going forward, the other assumptions that are fundamental to, to this plan don't change, such as the amount that school budgets are going to go up, or <clears throat> town budgets go up every year. So going into the future, uh, it's all the same set of assumptions. The, the specific numbers will change, obviously, as the base numbers change. So what is new and noteworthy about this? Uh, one is uh, in state aid, we got a little bit less in state aid than we figured from the original uh, long-range plan because the amount of Chapter 70 aid the town is receiving is not as high as uh, it was originally estimated. And we're going to, um, they have allocated only $20 per student, which is uh, sort of low compared to what we've had in uh, other years. Um, that is uh, somewhat counterbalanced by the fact that our state assessments were lower than we anticipated. So. Um, the net effect is a, a overall slight decrease in resources, um, but not significant. You'll also notice on the uh, fifth line down um, that the overlay uh, reserve has jumped up to 600000 That's because there's a Warren article that asks for the use of $400,000 for a revaluation and that uh, would be paid for out of overlay. So that's kind of in and out, and then it goes back to the usual 200000 that we usually put in the plan. 
Uh, the other big components of the budget, the school department number is the same as you've seen in the past. Uh, it does, and so that is consistent with what we've been saying all fall <coughs> and with the original plan's parameters. Uh, the Minuteman assessment is up um, fairly significantly from um, what we originally estimated. Um, it's up 12%. Uh, based on the numbers we've received from Minuteman. Um, the town budget, as I said, reflects the manager's budget and is right now slightly under the 3.25% increase uh, that was in the long range plan. The capital numbers do reflect what the capital planning committee has gone through. Um, so there is a big jump in the number of offsets here. That's because when we sold bonds this last fall, we receive significant numbers of premiums. Uh, when somebody buys our bonds, they, it's a sort of a two-part deal. They're, they bid on how much interest we have to pay on those bonds, and they will also, from time to time, give us what's called a premium, which is, if you've ever taken out a mortgage and paid points on that mortgage to change your interest rate, it's the same idea, that they are basically paying cash in order to reflect a different interest rate, but, and mostly what it does is when we put out these deals, it gets the interest rates to be a nice even rate from year to year and, and, a, and a certain coupon rate out into the future. Uh, so we got some fairly significant uh, premiums on that, which uh, we are using to offset um, and, and go toward capital. That means that the capital plan will use um, less borrowing in FY18 because we're paying cash for things. So that helps us in the out years because we won't be carrying those capital costs. Um, the insurance numbers are also down because um, as we rolled out to see who has enrolled in which plans and the plan selection and so forth, uh, it turns out that our original assumptions were a little higher than, than what we, uh, were, were higher than what they ended up being. This is all subject to further confirmation uh, in March once we have the final GIC rates, so we will know really what our insurance rate is. So that number will change, but we don't know at this point whether it will go up or down. Um, as I mentioned already, the state assessments are, uh, are down. All the other numbers of this sh on this sheet up to uh, the Warren articles are the same as they've been for the past couple of months. And the Warren articles are uh, up uh, significantly, mostly because of that $400,000 is considered a Warren article expense, and that's where it's showing up for the revaluation for the assessors. Um, with this, it means that we are this year taking out $370,000 from uh, the override stabilization fund. So it marks the first year in uh, the next few years, a series of years, where we'll start to draw down the stabilization fund so that by FY uh, 2021, we will have completely drained the override stabilization fund. Uh, and then it'll be time to do something else. Um, so that, in a nutshell, is where we are. I, I, I think you're all fairly familiar with the long-range plan, so instead of going through every single line, I figured to give it an overview at that level. But if you have specific questions about any of the lines or anything that went into putting this together, I'd certainly be happy to, to answer any and all questions. Ask questions now. There'll be a test later. Uh, the bulk of that is the MBTA assessment. Okay. Um, so the state giveth and the state taketh away at the same time. <coughs> and is um, Braintree and Quincy paying any more in their assessments? They're significantly lower than the state. Um, they are significantly lower. They, uh, there's a factor that, that each town is assigned. Uh, and it's to kind of a multiplier for their uh, assessments. and. Um, I think somebody in Braintree and Quincy years ago was very clever about getting that to be in their favor. Um, is it fair? 
No, it's not fair to Arlington, but that's a major political change that is frankly out of our hands. Charlie? Do we know, uh, <coughs> do we know why the uh, minimum assessment is up? Do we have, because I think they don't they base it on the prior year's population, student population. And last year the student population was down. Yeah, so the primary factor is the communities that left the district are now being charged 125% foundi foundation and not the, um, the actual assessment like we're being charged. So the shifting of that cost being driven down for those member communities that left has been redistributed to the remaining nine communities that are in the district, and that's the primary driver of why. I would just say to that, too, that uh, we had the first capital assessment for the debt on the planning for the new, uh, the new school there. And um, so uh, that will go on to the tax rate and, and be uh, excluded. Um, but it will start to show up in people's tax bills for FY18. It's about $215,000 total. Uh, what drove the $100,000 increase is uh, that within that line there's $100,000 that is set aside. It's not an expenditure, but it's sort of an, a set aside in case there are court judgments that we have the ability to pay certain court judgments if necessary uh, when we set the tax rate um, that aren't previously appropriated. And every year there's that hundred there's hundred thousand dollars as a kind of what if set aside. In FY seventeen on the recap when we finally did set the tax rate, we didn't have to make use of that. There were no such judgments, but part of this plan has always been to have that cushion in case something comes up that needs to be paid and that's not time to convene a town meeting or, or such before we set the tax rate. So it's back in there. And the, and the remaining amount is the debt service we pay on the Sims property. Thank you. Uh, how did the governor do on the UG? Uh, we did well. Um, he had made a promise to when he first was elected to try to match the increase in state revenues uh, to what was allocated to cities and towns in UGA, or Unrestricted General Government Aid. Uh, in his first year, he was able to do 75% of that increase, and in subsequent years, including in his proposed FY18 budget, uh, he was able to match it. So the state increase uh, overall was, I think, 3.9 or 3.8 percent, um, and that's the amount of, that our UGA went up. Okay, so did he fulfill his promise? He did fulfill his promise. Okay, that's a good thing. That is good. <coughs> I mean, it's a significant source of our state aid. It's, a, <coughs> it's, it's good when, when we get that increase. Now, the, the Chapter 70, did the increase in Chapter 70 not take into account uh, <coughs> increased school enrollment, or did they just underfund Chapter 70 in the governor's budget? Well, I, I've been looking into that. I've actually spent a lot of time in the last week trying to plow into the numbers. Um, I mean, really what it comes down to is because uh, we don't get any what's called foundation aid, we only get the, the uh, the supplemental aid, the twenty dollars per student, that um, we are not yet at the point that those enrollment increases have done enough to increase the foundation budget enough. That when you take the difference between what that the cost of running the schools and as calculated through that foundation, and what Arlington is expected to contribute toward that, which is measured by our wealth both in property and income. The foundation budget isn't growing enough to get to the point that we will get more aid based on the gap between what we're expected to pay and and what uh, it costs to run the schools, according at least to the state. 
Uh, so we're getting closer to that number, but we're still not there yet. So until uh, we are at the point that um, our wealth isn't growing faster than our but the foundation budget is going up, all we're going to get is the minimum aid, that $20 per student. In order for us to get the amount that we had originally put in the plan as an estimate for what uh, enrollment would be, uh, we'd need to get something like $65 per student in, in, uh, in minimum aid. Um, I will be back to uh, the Long Range Planning Committee uh, at a future meeting to discuss as I ferret out all the intricacies of Chapter 70, which there are many, <laughs> um, and how it is exactly applying to Arlington to make some suggestions about how we might think about rethinking how the long range plan takes these things into consideration. Because we've made assumptions about um, enrollment increasing aid, but the fact of the matter is that we're just not there yet. It hasn't had enough of an impact to affect what we get from the state. Thank you, Dr. Roger Hatch. He's retired. Uh, he's retired? Yes. I do have a call <coughs> into his successor. Okay, then we just have Charlie left. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, okay, other, other questions, Charlie? I think a week or two ago, I read in the uh, advocate that there, there's an $825,000 shortfall or something like that in the school department in fiscal year 2017. Uh, have you had any discussions about that? Is that going to somehow creep into the municipal budget? You know? Yeah, so I, I've spoken to the superintendent about it, and I, <clears throat> I think there was, and even I had it, some initial confusion in the, in the way it had been discussed publicly. Um, the shortfall is an $827,000 gap between what they think they need for FY18 and what they have for resources. So there's actually no spending shortfall or revenue. Oh, it's for next year. It's, it's for it's budget projections. Okay. Thank you. On the, the Minuteman, uh, I, I missed a little bit of you responding to Charlie's question. Uh, but first of all, what's happened to the enrollment in Minuteman as of October 1st? Uh, the total enrollment and Arlington's enrollment. Do you have those numbers? Arlington's enrollment. The state, uh, I think, has only gone up by one student. We were 120 last year. We yeah. were 121. Overall enrollment has gone down. Uh, I think we're down about 40 students. Okay. And uh, why did the numbers, the, our assessment, go up again? So the communities that left and are still sending students. Yep. DESE is saying, and they're right. The way the way it's currently worded, they're paying tuition in rate, which is the foundation uh, plus 25%. Okay. We're still paying the assessed rate. So those communities, I think we're collectively sent about 50 kids. So those 50 kids were sent, were paying, the communities were paying $27,000, $28,000 a year last year. Yeah. Now they're paying seventeen or eighteen thousand dollars a year. And those funds are redistributed into the assessment. Of <coughs> now there is a provision in the regional agreement that says and this, we'll have to test this because it conflicts with state regulation, even though the commissioner signed off the agreement that says that non member communities must pay the same as member communities so for an operating assessment. Not, not this year, starting, I believe it was not January, probably July 1, 2018. So we're going to have to see if that holds up. Okay, Dick. Adam, <coughs> what, <coughs> what percentage of the operating budget are we? Responsible for now. At um, Minuteman, yeah. it's probably about thirty-four <coughs> percent. And that's we were about thirty-four, thirty-five percent before. Yeah, we usually were in that thirty-three. We seem to have been hovering around thirty-three percent for a while. We're not up close to forty yet. Huh? I mean, I, I can double check that, but I don't think we. I don't think it's jumped up that much. Is there anything in this assessment uh, from borrowing? It's a, uh, Sandy, correct me if I'm wrong, you're not, well, prior borrowings, uh, the ESCO project they did is in the assessment number. They did do a recent borrowing for the building project. Yep. I believe you're accounting for that in the exempt debt service line. 
could not get the assessment. Okay, so that's exempt debt. Now, is $750,000 authorized for the planning, could that not fall, also fall within the building project debt exclusion? I'm not sure that I've seen that explicitly called out in the assessment chart. I'd have to double check that. Because, yeah. I mean, it is part of the building project, is the uh, <coughs> feasibility study. Yeah, no, it so it should be, uh, it should be exempted debt. Okay, other, other questions? Okay. Uh, well, we'll see how this goes. So this will be, so our goal is to cut the budgets by $370,668. So I don't take any money out of the, uh, out of the fund. We'll see how that works. <laughs> Okay, uh, well, okay, any other questions for the manager on anything happening within the borders of the town of Arlington? How's our snow and ice budget doing? Uh, before last night, <coughs> uh, expenditures to date have been $656,000. A uh, lot of, lot of salt. Uh, 350000 of that six fifty. dollars again, prior to last night's event. Uh, with salt in it. I saw a lot of salt. Okay, was the purchase of it? Yeah. If there had been some left, we went through it last night. Last night almost. Okay, so now we have new stuff here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is sand and salt still the same price? <coughs> it, it, it's bumped up a little bit this year. Okay. And so have you figured out where we're going to take snow if we need to? There's still year over year uh, signing uh, agreements with St. Camillus. Uh, to store the vacant lot across from St. Camillus. It's not a permanent solution. Uh, it's a cost-effective solution as compared to trucking it out of town. Um, but it's, at some point, I think we need to have a discussion about potentially thinking about buying that lot, maybe using that as a field, and carving out some space near the DPW facility at the practice field for the high school and using a portion of that as a, a lay-down facility for snow and ice, for debris from other kinds of storms that get to town. It's, it's triage every year. Have they gotten the uh, building started for the Thompson? Yes. Yep. Concrete is in the ground. Uh, steel should be uh, on site in February and, and erected. Um, and they, they tell us that, you know, basically wet weather will make, you know, could slow them down a day or so, but they're, they're prepped for, for proper heating and they're, they're going to keep working through. And they should have it, they're still on schedule. So have the building substantially complete by the second week of August. Okay. Dick? Uh, Stratton, um, time on budget? On time, uh, possibly early, and to date, significantly under budget. Okay, <laughs> okay any other questions? Charlie? <clears throat> yes, uh, Adam, about, was it the last year's town meeting or the town meeting before that? <clears throat> there was an article passed about transferring the town's electricity service to another party. Um, has that been implemented? There was supposed to be an opt-out. I don't think so we've ever seen it. So it's in process. Um, so the town meeting approved it, an aggregation plan that actually laid out what the town would do was then adopted by the Board of Selectmen. That went, uh, then went to the Division of Energy Resources. That took a few months and then they signed off. And now it's at the Department of Public Utilities. Um, I had to go and present on it a couple months back. We expect within the next month or so they'll approve it, and that is what will trigger us actually starting the aggregation. So that's when notices will go out to make Thank you. Uh, Alan? Update on the new road negotiations? <clears throat> uh, there's really no other update other than that um, we are, we're now gonna litigate uh, at, at the Housing Appeals Committee over the one and a half percent calculation. There's been an initial uh, meeting of council for both sides and nothing um, we're still fighting. We'll be fighting that for. That, that's going to take another several months at least. Okay. Uh, John. Just to follow up on Charlie's aggregation question, does the pricing still look favorable? Uh, I have to admit, I haven't asked them for updated pricing as we go through this process. Because that's another trigger point, right? Yeah, I mean, if the pricing is not favorable, we won't go forward. Okay. Other questions? 
This is your chance. You might not be oh, back again. The past rain we had, did it flood down there, the Muga area? So the next, uh, it just so happened that after those heavy rains, okay. the next day, uh, the planning department was doing the annual homeless count as part, part of the regional mm -hmm. effort to do a, a count of uh, homeless persons in town. And they went into that site. Yeah. And I had actually warned them that they should be very prepared for it to be very wet. And they said it was damp, but there wasn't any, wasn't yeah. any flooding. They, they could walk in and out. That's too bad. <laughs> <laughs> we, we are sort of still in a severe drought, though, so that's probably part of it. Charlie. How many homeless people are there? So prior years, um, no one has ever been counted, which I frankly don't think is accurate. This year, they documented three. Um, I think the number is greater than that, but it's a, it's a challenge to, to, to find that and document that they're standing. There was uh, there, two of them were uh, found and documented under the overpass uh, on the bike path, and one person was found actually on their way into the Mugar property, uh, into a small encampment. The encampment looks like multiple people lived there, but when they were there at about nine o'clock at night, there was no one else there at that time. So, is there a department in town or somebody doing something? to mitigate the situation, or do we just kind of, I'm not saying that flippantly, I'm just Yeah, no, it's a, it's a fair question. So we, uh, for that, the purposes of that event, we count. Uh, we are part of the Somerville Homeless Coalition, certain HUD funds we receive for Arlington go to the Somerville Homeless Coalition. Um, and we, last year, uh, the Board of Selectmen voted to put together uh, in, what do we call it, a camping unsheltered task force, which we've st actually still yet to pull together, um, so we, uh, we we need to come up with a plan for what what if anything we want to do to try to <coughs> remedy the situation. If you, um, I go to First Parish Church, and invariably once a month, the homeless person shows up, uh, and we're trying to put together resources so we could sometimes drive them. To where they need to go. Yeah. Is there a list, and I'm sure other churches probably hit the same issue, uh, is there a list of resources that a homeless, you know, somebody shows up at an institution that that can be made available to them, you know, go to this address, contact this phone number? Yes. Yeah, the Somerville Homeless Coalition, we can get something for the parish or other parishes too. Okay. I, th I think that would be great if you could send that out to all the uh, uh, churches because that's invariably where some people go. Adam, I can give you a list. Of the, I'm sorry? I can give you a list. It's on the website at the congregation I'm at. I'm, I'm a chair okay. of the shelter board, so I, can, I know we have a list on that website. Is that the same, do you think, is this? Is It'll be similar. Sure. We, yeah, we, 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 we get referrals. Okay, if you two could cross-reference. Might as well just have one list of contacts uh, and, and get that out. That would be very appreciated. See if up on that, on that the, the count. Is, is this time of year the only time that that, that count is made, or, or is it done throughout the year? Because in, in the summer, for example, I would guess if there was a count made, there'd be a lot more people. Um, yeah, this is it's the know, national next to night. Thorndike, okay. Yeah, they do it. it it's, I, can, I, I <coughs> have that same question. Right. So more people would be seeking shelters, right. uh, but I know Boston does it on the same night. I, I, I think across the nation. It, yeah, it's nationwide. I heard about it in NPR and yeah. in Wyoming, <laughs> which is really cool. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and I'll just say, change of subject. Yeah, a while back, Adam, there was a, 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 a you spoke to us about it, and it was a story in Connecticut, just about the number of um, vacant storefronts in the in the center. Has there been any? More dialogue with with landlords or any anything further in terms of efforts. Um, and, and this is really more of a private issue than it is a yeah. town issue. But in terms of um, you know, is, is landlords being more proactive, or the town maybe um, increasing the dialogue with them to, to try to fill spaces? So a, a couple answers. The vacant storefront registry bylaw was approved by the AG last week, so we're going to start rolling out implementation of that. Um, 
We've had positive dialogues with um, a number of the property owners and less positive with some of the other property owners. Um, I guess I really see it as there really is one problem. Property owner in the center. And I, if you drive through, <laughs> I, I think you can <coughs> which one it is. Um, the, the, the vacant properties on the Broadway Plaza side, um, they, uh, at least two of the three have plans to go in. Cafe Nero is going into the old CVS. Uh, they have a couple locations in the city. Uh, I believe there's a pasta restaurant going in uh, to where Madrona Tree was. Uh, and I'm not sure if there's a plan for that third vacancy in those storefronts. So that, those property owners are working to get people in there. Um, Sweet Chili that just got papered up, that's being transferred to a company, a group called Noodle City that's just going to refurbish it, rebrand it, and open up. Uh, so there are some things happening, uh, but there's, there is that one property owner that remains a challenge. Yeah. Particular property owner just want to get rid of all of the tenants and something that I don't think that's the plan. Um, I would actually say that if that was the plan, I, I think that might be a good thing, um, but I'm not sure that that is the Okay, if I uh, just go through a few other articles. Article 38 is the appropriation for zoning bylaw recodification. Now, um, are you leading the charge or should we get somebody else in here? So, for, for more details, definitely Jenny, Jenny Ray, and Laura uh, Wiener could come in, but I, I can talk about it. I can definitely talk about it. Okay, why don't you? So, the, the town's actually already kicked off the zoning recodification, and we, we really labored over if there was a better name for it, but it really is re recodification of the zoning bylaw. It's updating the zoning bylaw that was last comprehensively updated in, I think, 1974, uh, to both make it compliant with current state law, also make it more usable for both town staff, residents, contractors, um, and to, to update the language contained with it, uh, contained within it. Uses uh, make it more um, make it more logical as you go through it. Uh, we've kicked off uh, that process. We've hired consultants. Uh, right now, we're paying for it out of CDBG funds uh, to close out what would be the final phase of getting it adopted at a special town meeting this fall. Uh, we need some additional funds to continue with the consultant, but also we need funds. Uh, whenever you change bylaws, zoning bylaws, you have to advertise it uh, in the, the local newspaper which when you change the whole zoning by law uh, is a lot of newspaper space and thereby has a cost associated with it. And that's actually estimated to be $15,000 the amount of money that we have. Fifth, one five, fifteen thousand dollars worth of work. Okay, so is that the request? Totally, it's 40, right? Correct. I think it's 15,000. 15, so there's a zoning recodification working group 55. Yeah, 55 for the total. So there's a zoning recodification working group that's uh, overseeing this whole effort. Uh, and actually, just this past Saturday, we had uh, what we called an all boards meeting uh, the Board of Selectmen, Redevelopment Board, Zoning Board of Appeals, Board of Health, Conservation Commission, Historic Commission, Historic Districts Commission, <coughs> Conservation Commission uh, all came uh, to provide feedback to the consultant and to the planning department on the zoning bylaw. Uh, as they start to work through and create a draft of an updated bylaw. You can't use any more community development park grant on this? We're maxed out. Now, which we can spend okay. So you're looking for a total appropriation of 55000 of which 15000 is just going to be for the advertising? Correct. Okay. Uh, do people feel they want to have the planning department come in? and present on this, or are they comfortable? Do you have questions for the manager on this? Would you vote on it now? No. OK. So do you want to have? Uh, OK, uh, Liz, why don't you call the planning director, or that be the appropriate? Yeah. Yeah, OK. Absolutely. Call the planning director and actually see if she can come in uh, next Wednesday. <coughs> so see if you could move Rich Greco to 745 
and ask the uh, planning department if they could come in on this article at 8.15. Okay, so is there any questions on the manager for this? Okay. Uh, parking operating costs, Article 39. So this is, um, and I'll, I'll plan to provide the detail, but this is taking parking revenues that are going into that special fund that town meeting voted to create in October. And um, you may recall in October I'd said, you, uh, the state law, adopting a state law, allows us to pay for the acquisition and installation of the meters themselves without appropriation, but the operation needs an appropriation. So this uh, warrant, <coughs> this article would be requesting an appropriation for the funds to pay for the credit card processing fees, <coughs> uh, for the, uh, the wireless connection fees, uh, for um, to offset some costs related to parking control officers. So this would be taking that all parking money into that fund and then paying some of those operating costs. And will that go into the parking budget? Um, I, we, we, as an accounting measure, we're recommending that we try to account for it all. All, all the new expenditures out of this. Okay, but uh, under what budget would it be? Or, or you wanted... This is, a, I mean, this would be a, an appropriation out of a special fund. Um, okay, so the, in other words, the spending would come under the article. Yes. 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 Uh, Okay, how much are you looking to, now, okay, so this is the operation of the parking meters. The parking budget under the treasurer has the uh, control over the, another parking fund. Why well, have two? So this is the first time that there's revenue, the meter revenue yeah. from on street meters. Um, the parking budget before has had violation revenue, but not uh, street meter revenue. So this is a new mechanism. I think I'd like to eventually move down the road and see if we can create our, uh, an enterprise fund for the operation. But we're not we're not going to point there yet. Okay, but we only have one more one little box on the summary sheet of the finance committee report. So you can only have, you can only have one more. Uh, Dean, John, Charlie. So if I remember this correctly, but the revenue from the parking meters is going into this fund which you're talking about taking the money out for the maintenance. Um, is that correct? Can I say that? Yeah. So wouldn't we also need to do an appropriation to um, to disperse money from the fund back into the general fund? Or are you telling us that the parking meters are actually going to cost as much as they collect? So there's an additional article that's not listed under the financial articles to create a parking benefit district that was newly enabled uh, as part of the Municipal Modernization Act too. So I see it as three parts. Keeping the general fund harmless with what revenue is currently going to the general fund, that's mostly going to be the violation and permit revenue. Paying for the cost of the meters, which would come in and out of this fund. And then any balance go into the Parking Benefit District Fund, which will reinvest in the infrastructure of Arlington Center, where the meters are. So wait, what? Well, that last part cost. So municipal modernization allows for the creation of a Parking Benefit District, meaning you can take meter revenue and reinvest it in the district where those meters are located, in the infrastructure. So any, any additional funds, and we project there will be some, maybe thirty to fifty thousand dollars after you've paid for operating everything, bought, buying and installing and operating it. You can fix sidewalks, hang flowers, clean streets. Okay, so the now the the parking budget, uh, I mean all the the uh, fines go into the general fund. So the parking budget was just an appropriation for the parking clerk and the assistant and I think maintenance of the of the uh, the meters in the center. Yeah, the lots. Okay. Yeah. So do you see all this being grouped into one one area? Because right now we have three. 
Yeah, so the, the law is funny that the law treats metering public ways differently than lots. Um, I'm not sure why, but that's the way the law treats it. Um, so that, yeah, I mean, that's why I said I, I would like to, and I'm, I'm not sure that we actually know if it's legal yet. I'd love to just pull it all into one enterprise fund. Um, but we're still figuring out. Okay, so would you think about an enterprise fund in the next annual town meeting? The next meeting. This year's one. Right? No, the year coming up next. Uh, John. Adam, um, were you saying that the meter revenues exceed, the expected meter revenues to exceed the meter <coughs> operating costs? I expect when we look at the combination of violations, meter revenue, um, or I think it's anything else, permits, violations, and revenue, and, and meters in total to exceed the total operating cost of all. Of the, just, but just the meters, not the lot meter, not, not the lot. Okay, and right <coughs> now are the revenues and violation, for lack of a better term, revenues going into the, this uh, special revolving parking fund? Right now, every new dollar we're collecting from the meters is going into this fund. The violation revenue, no, on, on street. Um, the violation revenue is still going into the general fund revenue account. That's accounted for what we're seeing. Okay, and how about the fine, the, uh, Revenue from the two watt meters still also going into the general fund. That's all we're seeing. <coughs> okay, do you see taking that back in and funneling it through this? Uh, not not this. I think this specifically talks about public ways. But okay. This this statute. Uh, but if we were going to do something on an enterprise basis, yes. So how much are you looking to basically transfer from the special revolving fund and to be expended under this article? Our estimate is going to be a total of about $60,000. It's $78,000. It's $60,000, and for just for the credit card processing fees, uh, there's $6,000 for parking meter lease location, uh, and then there's some money for repair and maintenance of the machines themselves, which hadn't previously budgeted because we didn't have the machines, so. Okay. So the total is? 78. 78,000. Oh, really? Did you change it? Now, uh, I assume that's, uh, yeah, what's the balance you have now? Do you have a? In that account? Yeah. Uh, right today, there's $21,000. Um, okay, so that's projected for next year. Correct. And if we appropriate 78,000 from the fund and you only bring in 70, then you only spend seven. Uh, questions on this, Alan? Yeah, just following up on that, the, the, through the chair, I guess, uh, since the parking meters are brand new and there are going to be a lot of questions like this, I guess I would like to put an appendix into the Finance Committee report with some sort of summary of the ins and outs and, and you know, what, what we're just talking about here, if that, if that would be possible. Yep. I think I'd answer a lot of questions in our lecture. Yeah. Uh, I think my question is answered. Uh, okay, are there any other questions on this? I have. Okay, Jake. Do you have a problem with your meters uh, and repair and so forth? I no, know. we. Um, I've had a lot of complaints from people, particularly my wife, when the down on <laughs> the street and she's at the bookstore. Yes, yeah, so we, we, we struggled out of the gate with collections. Yeah. Uh, so we've now brought on, and that's part of the costs actually in, incorporated in this figure, an outside collection firm to catch up on the collections. What was happening when you, when they weren't being collected, they'd back up okay. and then they'd jam yeah. and slot. Uh, I think we've actually, just this week, finally rectified that. The only other problem that the treasurer has told me that he keeps finding is people are putting Canadian quarters in, oh. and that for some reason jams yeah. the, I, I don't think it was a solve to that, uh, other than getting out there and not jamming it. I'm not sure why, they're, they're, they're similar size, Yeah.
Okay, are there any other questions, Trout? Uh, do these machines uh, send a uh, message when they're not working? Yes. Okay, so, so the sound knows when it's jammed. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> okay, any other questions? Jane? It's not really a question as much as a comment for efficiency's sake, because I think since this is a new program and is in a revolving fund, it's part of the larger town structure at this point. I, I think we should probably um, take Article 38 and Article 26, which is the parking benefit district, and ask the esteemed chair of the Capital Planning Committee to sort of explain to us how this all comes together. Because Adam made a comment about, well, first of all, we have to talk about the acquisition of parking, which I thought the initial acquisition went through the capital budget. So now we're talking about future acquisition going through here. And then Adam made a comment about excess revenue being reinvested into the area, which would normally be a capital <coughs> expenditure. And so rather than, <coughs> I, I, not, not that I think there's anything wrong, but rather than waiting a month and then asking the question, I feel like I should at least say it right now, just so we have, just have an understanding of how this is going to work. Yeah, you, you, yeah. Well, why don't I come back in a month with something like what Adam Jones described in terms of a sort of a total report out on all the ins and outs and what the plan actually looks like. And yeah, I was just trying to say your staff, and if you go through Charlie, and you'll, you'll come back here, and then we'll ask Charlie all the way to the capital budget, then he'll have to come back. And that way, if you go to Charlie, he'll have to back, right, so one. <coughs> yeah, and we can, what if your problem, I mean, we can, we can find that if I can get. Yeah, I, I, I think this to me, who I think understands all this, to a certain degree, uh, it gets confusing because you've got a budget, a Warren article, and two Warren articles uh, to see how this is all going to fit together. Yep. Uh, and uh, I, I think if, if it's shown that like a year from now, there's only going to be one entity where all this is running through, I think that'll make things a lot easier. It could pay for the town clerk, it could pay for the assistant, it could pay for the repairs. It just everything's done through one budget, one enterprise fund, one revolving fund, whatever you're going to do. Yeah. Uh, uh, so yeah, if, if perhaps you could come back in a month yeah. with that. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions on the uh, parking operating? Okay. I suppose... Are you thinking of an enterprise fund for all parking or just the center? Because that's, that's another, if, you, if this thing, if this district is only going to be for the center, you do collect fines <coughs> in other parts of the town. So where that, where's that money going to go? Of course, right now, it just goes into the general fund. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> that's a good question. I don't, I, I don't. <coughs> Sorry? What, what's the purpose of putting it in an enterprise fund. I mean, normally an enterprise fund is to make sure that users pay for certain costs. So, um, you know, the way, the way it works now, the money's going into the town and they're paying for the costs, right? Yeah. Is, it, is there a specific benefit to having it in an enterprise fund? I, I think in this case, the benefit would be for simplicity of to try to clear up some of the, the <coughs> complexity <coughs> tonight. Okay, so we might have to have you back for. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, anybody else on the parking? Uh, appropriation school budget gives school renovation. Uh, what's the status? So, uh, as everyone knows, the debt exclusion was passed last spring in regards to uh, renovating the Gibbs to make it a townwide sixth grade. So, uh, an architect's been hired and has begun work for some time now. Uh, and for the Gibbs project, uh, we decided to move forward <coughs> as, uh, as opposed to design bid. Uh, we're taking the what's called the construction manager at risk or CM at risk approach, <coughs> where a contractor is brought on board during the design phase to work with the architect uh, to, to work on constructability and design. 
so we have Feingold Alexander uh, Architectural Firm and Shamit Construction working on the project. And when you do see them at risk, instead of going out to bid and then there's just a number and, and they bill you for that number, um, CM at risk gives you what's called a uh, GMP that I always get wrong. Gross maximum price. Guaranteed. Guaranteed maximum price. Thank you. Um, and you will get that number. Uh, we'll ask town meeting to appropriate that number. But it's open book pricing such that if as part of it, through the job, if they don't spend the money, we don't pay them for that. So that's why it's the guaranteed maximum price. You also, the, the benefit that's hoped is that because the contractor is involved during the design phase, that there would be less change orders. Not no change orders, but, but less change orders to reduce contingency and liability while you're constructing it. So they're, they're designing now. Uh, we expect to have a preliminary guaranteed maximum price uh, around the time of town meeting. So we're also going to put an article <coughs> identical to this for a special town meeting that will open up on the second night of town meeting. Um, I think what we will ultimately end up doing is asking for an appropriation for some portion of that guaranteed maximum price at a special town meeting, and then ask for a separate appropriation when we learn further numbers uh, under the annual town meeting, because that money won't be needed until after July 1st anyways. That's all going to come in to better clarity in the next month or so. Uh, so this is going to be like some of our more recent school project decision making um, I think we're going to be pushing right up against town meeting to understand exactly when we'll need the figures and how much the figures will be. Charlie, will, will capital budget be making a recommendation on this? I don't think so. I mean, I think this has been voted by the town, right? So it's, it's dead excluded. Um, okay. I mean, we'll, we could, I mean, isn't there a, a committee working on this? Yeah, so the, I mean, the PTBC is working on it, yeah. uh, and then the school administration also has involvement in the design. So it's been authorized, you know. I, mean, okay. I think we would run a proposed vote by the capital plan yeah. committee as a matter of practice. No. Okay, when do you think you'll be able to <coughs> come before the finance committee with a proposal? Uh, I think I could probably have a better scheduled proposal by early March. I don't think I'm going to have a figure for the, the first tranche of an appropriation until sometime. I see a blank space <coughs> in the post war article. Okay, so uh, any questions on this? Yeah, the, your bid was advertised today for the first time. Put out for the Gibbs. What was uh, my did you see what it was? I, didn't. I think it was four, four categories. It's a final subpoena. <coughs> Estimated twenty million. So I, I, th I think what you saw is so Shamit is the general contractor, like we would have, and then they they go out and solicit subcontractor bids. That's got to be that must be what you. There, there are some tr some trades that are known as, known as filed uh, subbidders yeah. that are put out by kind of traditional uh, bidding. Yeah, the, the construction manager then assembles those based on those, then puts that together to deliver uh, the, the guaranteed maximum price. So I, that's what's going on. So is Sharma building this? Yes. So they're working with the architect. And they're also building it. Correct. The idea is to have some input from the contractor early on so that you have kind of constructability issues. The architect might say, I you know. I understand, but that's not usual procedure. Well, that's They the, usually don't put the shaman, I'm just using shaman, is working with the architect to get this package together. And they usually have to get it later because it's like a double negative. Well, there are three players. There's the, the contractor, mm -hmm. the architect, mm -hmm. and we have an owner's project manager. So under construction manager at risk, the idea is to you bring on your architect and, and you know, right from the beginning to start, 
design, you select a construction company and then have them talk as the architect is, is putting together his plans, consult with the, the general contractor. Is so this something we haven't done in the past with the other schools? No, it's the first time that I think Arlington has done this for a school, but it is the preferred construction method from the MSBA, and it's how most school projects are done in the state now. So how did we, how did Shaman get the bid? Uh, so the our OPM and the firms called NV5, they put out a request for qualifications for CM firms or for construction management firms, uh, and there were two respondents, Shawmet, um, and I'm not recalling the other uh, the other group, but a subcommittee of the PTBC interviewed them, and then based on their submitted qualifications and their interviews, selected Shawmet. For, for what it's worth, I can't say this from my own experience, but the, the multiple architects on the PTBC uh, all said in their private sector experience, construction management at risk is all they've ever worked with um, and, and had favorable opinions about it reducing, you know, unknown or, or unforeseen contractor issues. Sure, is the, the Department of Town Building Committee or the Building Committee involved? <laughs> With the selection process? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, any other questions on this? So, obviously, it'd be another issue to talk to you about later in March. Okay, appropriation, transfer, revaluation of personal property, Article 41. Uh, okay, obviously, this will be 400000 correct? Yeah, we. Uh, that's how much we budgeted. Um, so every nine years, so every, every three years there is a revaluation process required by the Department of Revenue, but then every nine years there's an even more thorough uh, revaluation process required by the Department of Revenue where you literally have to try to go out to every house, even get into homes that have had uh, significant renovations uh, to do a reassessment or a revaluation. Uh, so Paul Tierney, the director of the assessing office, has solicited two quotes from firms that perform this kind of uh, reval. And the, the high end, frankly, was 400,000. Um, so I, I think we could probably do it a little bit better for that, a bit better than that, but uh, we'll, we'll probably still ask for that appropriation or whatever's not utilized each time back in general. Charles? So <clears throat> we, we always keep the, um, whatever's left over from this, uh, from the revaluations in the revaluation warrant room. Do you know how much is in? About $30,000. Yeah, usually it's somewhere in the close to $50,000. Does that sound right to you? We, we, we could look it up, honestly. I don't know if you can't look it up now. Yeah. Let's see. This, um, I should say, this work doesn't have to be done until the close of FY19, but it's a very time intensive and long process. So the board and the director of assessing are advising that we get an appropriation for FY18 so that we can start and not have any risk of not meeting the, the Department of Revenue's deadline. So this will be for fiscal 19? It has to be done by the end of fiscal 19. This appropriation. But the actual, it will it, impact the assessments for fiscal 19. Yes. Okay. okay, are there any questions on this? Okay. Uh, now, do, do are people uh, comfortable with Article 41 and the explanation? <coughs> I mean, we could have the assessor come in and go into more detail, or you said, or uh, we can go ahead and vote it tonight. No. Try? No. Have the assessor come no. in? No, we, we normally interview the assessor at this Oh. Uh, okay, we'll wait to hear some recommendation if you would like. Okay. Forgot about that. Yeah. Uh, Sandy was just able to check this $31,000. Okay. Okay. Can you talk about this last year when we had the
Okay, so we'll wait for the whoever does the budgets on assessing could also wrap in Article 41 with it. Now, uh, there's one article here, and I just want to raise that with this with the FinCom. It's Article 59. Now, I, I talked about this with the manager a little bit today, and apparently this, there's quite a bit of pressure. Oh, tech sheet. Pass that around. Uh, and coming around now is a fact sheet on sanctuary town status. Uh, So I want people to uh, to think about this. It, it's not on the face of it a financial article, but um, you know it's a broad policy article that I see the selectmen in on. But uh, considering the threats of the current administration in Washington D.C., uh, I'll, we don't have to discuss this now. But I'll just put my fear is that I don't think this is going to make a bit of a change in how the town of Arlington handles its current police strategies. But it's going to put a giant target on the town of Arlington uh, that I would just assume Cambridge and Somerville and Boston take care of. Target uh, by whom? I'm sorry? Target by whom? Uh, the, the President of the United States has threatened to withhold federal funds from any sanctuary city or town. Right. And we get about $6 million, $6 million from the federal, primarily in our community development block grant and other things. So I just want the Finance Committee to think about this before we, uh, whether they want to uh, take a stand on this, is before we go about painting a big red target on the town of Arlington, uh, that we, we think about it. So I, that's my concern for you to discuss. Not now, but at some point in the future. Dean? Can we get a list um, on that page? Can we get a list of our federal funds, what they are by federal grant, and then maybe next to each one of them a comment on how we get these federal funds, meaning like, is it an entitlement grant? Do we qualify it? To, what, what is it we have to do? Because um, I have chicken scratch in my basement in one of my old books from, from when the federal sequester kicked in that I wrote a note that said we don't actually qualify for CDBG anymore. And so I, I remember it was a long discussion about that. And so I think it would be helpful because I think one of the things that people are talking about this is I went to the Selectman's meeting and everyone said, well, don't worry. I can't take away all this money that we're entitled to. I don't remember being entitled to CDBG. I remember, I think you told us, Adam, actually, that we're not entitled to that anymore and that we have some handshake agreement with the prior administration to level fund it, but not cut it. But we don't actually, we don't have 50,000 residents. We don't have poverty levels. We don't have any of that stuff. So I think it would be helpful if we had a list of all of our federal money and then people knew this is the money, these are the, these are the grants, these are the education grants, IDA, CDBG, and this is what the ones we firmly qualify for under federal law, and these are the ones that we might be, whatever CDBG is for grandfather or not, or even we qualify, at least people have a full, at least we have a full understanding of what the true nature of it would be. Would that be, uh, so the town accountant pull that together? Yeah, so that's, um, he, he already has, it's in, uh, and it's in the, um, A133. the A133 audit, yeah. and it's outlined step by step. It's almost all education money. Um, we are not we, we are not really qualified as an entitlement community, but my understanding is what several decades ago, a former selectman with clout for the National League of Cities had some legislative change made that grandfather is in as an entitlement community. So I don't think we're in jeopardy of not being an entitlement community now. Um, but that I, I fully expected that as this debate went forward at town meeting we'd have to have a list as you as you mentioned. Okay, okay so it'll be in the uh be in the main audit or the uh, federal? Yeah, 
<coughs> okay. So if anybody uh, could go on the website, pull out the audit, and you can see the range of federal grants that we get uh, from there. Would that be it? That should it's be simple. I'm sorry? I looked. It's not on the website. Oh, it's not? Is that on the comptroller site? Could you ask him if he could email that around? Yeah. Email it to you and to the FinCom? Yeah, I, he has emailed it to me, so I can just search for that. Okay. <coughs> so, may I just, so, um, I, I'm, I've been trying to take a very um, neutral position on, on the sanctuary town matter. Um, and I, I've certainly heard in, in questions or emails or feedback that's come to me a lot of misunderstanding about what sanctuary town status is or what the impacts may be. So I felt compelled uh, to work with the Police Department, Health and Human Services, um, and the Board of Selectmen to put together uh, what I'm hoping is a neutral fact sheet that at least dispels some of the misunderstandings and misconceptions. So that's what this is. It hasn't been released publicly yet. Uh, the Board of Selectmen's seen it. Uh, we'll issue it. We'll put it on the town website tomorrow, send it out via the email list. Um, so that, that's what the sheet is that I just passed around. I didn't know if we'd talk about it tonight. But I figured if we did, I'd bring it and I'd share it with you. Um, so uh, that, I just wanted to make clear what that was. Though. Okay. John? Uh, can I just ask you about... Yes. Um, you the fact sheet? Uh, is that uh, I'm looking at the last two bullets, and... Um, my understanding of what you're saying here is that we get about six hundred we get six million dollars a year in federal grant funding, but none of that is for is related to immigration or Department of Homeland Security Correct. money and at the current time the legal opinion or majority legal opinion is that it's only Immigration or DHS funding, which would be at risk or could be at risk? So it seems to be. So town council has looked at it. Um, he's read, I've read, Sandy's read a lot of uh, coverage in the press, uh, statements by the Attorney General of California, uh, governing magazines put out information on it. It does seem to be a pretty well agreed upon legal principle that you can't, that the federal government cannot cut federal funding for non-compliance or actions not related to that federal funding. So that seems to be pretty well agreed upon. Um, I think we also, though, all acknowledge that this is a new day, <laughs> and a lot of prior agreed upon principles will be tested. So I don't know that. I, I think town council will get up at the town meeting or before this body and say pretty confidently in his understanding of current legal principle, or at least uh, I should say prior legal precedent or principle. But I don't know that any of us, unless there is further information between now and town meeting, are going to be able to confidently stand up and say that there will be no impact of federal funding to this town. Or there will be no attempt to impact. Th that, for sure, I can't say. Right. Which would then be tested in the courts for a long time. A long time. Yeah. yeah. Okay, any other uh, just questions, Tom? I guess I don't understand what's the urgency here. We, we, we don't really know. No one can really say that we're not going to get the six million or get the six million. We don't know a lot what's going on because it's a new administration. What is the urgency of doing this immediately? What is the gain by doing this immediately where we might have a chance of losing funds? Why can't this be done in a year from now, six months from now? Why is all of a sudden? Well, I, I don't think the manager is the one who's pushing this. No. I, no, but I what, what is there? Is there a benefit to this? Yeah. Well, that, also, we give, that we have a possibility of giving up six million dollars. Yeah. Well, I, I don't think the manager can really respond. He's the he's providing right. the neutral information. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, the driving force is coming from the board of selectmen. Uh, so I think, you know, those are the people you'd have so to have ask, they ask the question. You what the urgency is it? It needs to be done now. So the you have opinion. Uh, just a, a, a little bit of nuance to add to that. It started with residents' reactions after the uh, election in November. The Human Rights Commission then got involved, and they actually were the group that proactively brought the matter before the Board of Selectmen, and the Board of Selectmen agreed with them. Um, 
I, I guess I, I'll say what I have heard from proponents is that with um, both issued and expected issuance of immigration policy changes, that it's important to let people who live in this town or may choose to live in this town know that we are welcoming of them. And that even if our policies already match that, uh, making a public pronouncement of those policies is important to make sure that everybody feels welcome in the community. That is what the proponents are saying. Okay, so just one or two more questions and then uh, just move on. Charlie? Uh, yes, <clears throat> Adam, uh, traditionally when we have these, uh, you know, various complicated articles in front of town meeting, town council gives an opinion as to whether the article is actually legal. And, um, you know, when the South decided to secede, I mean, it was declared by the federal government as illegal. And are we saying now that, um, you know, we can sort of unilaterally decide to um, not follow the directions of the federal government and it's a legal article for, for uh, the town to pass? I mean, are we getting an opinion from town council? I'm, I'm a layman. I'm not saying it in yeah. the right term, but, but I'm trying to understand exactly what the what this means. Okay. So I think what Doug would say is that he would have legal uh, reservations about passing a bylaw that talked about <coughs> regulating police powers or compliance yeah. with federal law. Uh, I think he would in turn say that a resolution is nothing more than a statement and therefore would be acceptable. So is this for a resolution or is this? This is for a resolution. I see. Okay. So I, I, I think that would be his answer. Okay. So any other questions on it? It's going to be an issue and I think people ought to think about, you know, all sides and we can discuss it, you know, later on. Um, okay. Are there any other questions for the manager? I think we've got most of the, yeah, we have another resolution too, but we can, um, I think those are most of the finance. Is there any other of the articles, because we just got this now, that you think that the selectmen would be handling, but that could have a financial impact? Uh, Adam? Uh, I think I'll mention that the Municipal Modernization Act, and you've heard us mention that a lot, uh, has set forth a new way to handle revolving funds. So I know that's historically a, a Board of Selectmen vote. So uh, the, the Act says that now we need to have the, the purposes and sort of the, the blanket authorization for the revolving fund be contained in a bylaw, and that each year town meeting would vote as it does now to authorize the amount that could be spent. Um, they then realized that uh, people couldn't have bylaws passed and approved by the Attorney General before FY18 started. Yeah. Uh, so they've given us an extension. Uh, but what we'll do, what we'll try to do, is pass a new bylaw that has the purposes and intent of every revolving fund uh, be voted on by town meeting, and then take our normal traditional <coughs> uh, authorizing the revolving funds. Then when the Attorney General approves that bylaw, presumed in August or so, we'll be operating under what's required and the vote authorizing the amount will stand, but then next year um, we'll go forward with it. I guess it would be a slightly different vote, but the text of it would all be in a bylaw. So I think that's worth worth doing. Um, now, uh, okay, so so that'll be a selectman article as it has been in the past? Correct. Okay. I think it's also worth mentioning that there are four uh, starting with Article 22, 22, 23, 24, and 25. Um, these are all related to expanding or offering new uh, property tax exemptions to seniors, veterans, uh, or disabled populations. Uh, these stem from efforts coming out of the Council on Aging uh, in response to concerns about uh, tax pressures on, on uh, our senior population. Uh, so these would allow us to enhance uh, or create tax workup programs that could run parallel to the Harry Barber program for senior citizens and veterans. 
uh, create a voluntary donation fund uh, that could then help to defray uh, taxes paid by uh, elderly or uh, senior and disabled <coughs> populations. And then 25 uh, would allow us to annually adjust <coughs> the amount, um, the income limits for which you can qualify for senior tax exemptions by the CPI. Because suppose we're having a static, <coughs> uh, static figure. So we'll have more fleshed out proposals of what the, what the tax impacts would be. But I, again, I think the Finance Committee would be interested in Okay. I noticed that the uh, Article 20, the vote uh, email accounts for members of public bodies, is that the same as last year? Yes. Okay, didn't we pass it last year? We did. Why is it? Do you have any idea why it's. Because I didn't get it done until the day before the deadline for the warrant. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, no, I, I think the proponent uh, chose to file it. Um, I did. I, I emailed him to let him know that we got it done shortly after I emailed the, the finance committee and the other involved boards. He was very appreciative of it, but I, I, I don't know why he chose to not withdraw it. But that, I think that's why. That's what. That's why it's there. Okay. Okay, we'll go through these, you know, sort of one by one to see if there's others we want to hear. Uh, are there any other questions for the manager? Where's the O'Neill flag? I can't find it. <laughs> we, 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 we need to make oh, a bigger flag? and better one. No, we, I, I wrote to John Cole. Yeah. And he's got money in somebody left over in his uh, building account. And as soon as Al gets some language for the flag, uh, we'll replace it. Yeah, no, no, we'll definitely replace it, no question. Okay, uh, here's a question. I, uh, we need a picture of the plaque. And I, uh, you know, that was three computers ago. <laughs> and I'm not sure I have it. Does anybody might have taken a picture of the plaque maybe when it was uh, put in? I mean, there's several of us here who've been here for a bunch of years. Uh, what about those pictures when we used to have the group photos and they were usually along that wall? Yeah. Would it yeah. be in those pictures? In this could be in annual reports, maybe? Yeah. 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 You know what year it was dedicated? Oh, let's see. He died in 93? Something like that. So my guess is 96, 5? Yeah. It was here when I started in 96. Yeah. Okay. So there may be a picture in the annual report. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Perhaps since the sign is there, I was thinking of under the clock or something like that. Okay. Uh, any other pictures? Any any other pictures? <laughs> any other questions for the manager? Okay. Uh, you can go take pictures I, of the hall if you want. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'd like to thank you both for coming. We appreciate you. your time. You're welcome. Yeah. So uh, we could, if you're interested in doing this, take a, a vote on Article 37. Uh, 37 is similar to the vote we took two years ago, authorizing $15,000 for our. East Arlington, this would be for the center because it's all being redone. Uh, what is the will of the committee? Boy, you're really. Yes. Stephen? I'll, I'll, I'll move for the, the, the appropriation or recommendation of $15,000. Do I have a second? Yeah. Second. Discussion? Tom? So we don't know where there's a cap. We could be sitting here five years from now and giving 30000 and be so far into this that we can't say no. Well, this is just for, I mean, if we, if we, if we take a similar position to what we have in the past, it's for $15,000 to do the consultant uh, to help go out, raise the money, but the, but the actual works <coughs> are raised privately or with grant money. But, it, but what's the next? 
piece of town. They want 15 or 20. What's the next one they want? 25 or 30 well, as we go well, down. What we could do then is follow Dean's lead and say uh, that I could put it in the comment that um, the, uh, the Finance Committee anticipates or expects that the manager and the uh, Arts Council will uh, develop a long-term plan. Uh, so this. we know it's going to be happening in the future. So after this one, if you're going to come back, you're going to give us a plan. Yeah, I think if, if the committee feels that's an appropriate thing to do, we could go in that direction, yes. Well, no, I would say it's, it's, it's February 1st, so they've got two months to come up with, not a comprehensive long-term plan, but a, a general concept of, yeah. of what the long-term will be. Because I think the other, um, I know we sometimes, you know, we get hung up on smaller amounts, like 15,000 and stuff that. I agree with Tom says about coming back, but I, I also don't lose sight of the fact that um, $15,000 <coughs> for East Arlington Consultant, <coughs> and we didn't get hundreds of thousands of dollars of private funding to actually put art in East Arlington. I think they mentioned that we had some temporary art that <coughs> got put up. So, you know, so we spent, <coughs> really, if you think about it, right, we spent $15,000 for a piece of temporary art. Well, a couple of them, no. No. A couple of things. Because there what was, was a, a chair thing? one. The chair. The chair one, and then there's the photos that are up Okay, Carolyn, could you speak up a little bit as old people can't hear you? There's the chair project, which, ha which is an annual project, and then there's the murals that are on a majority of the buildings. There's the boxes that exist on a number of places from East Arlington down to Spine Pond, and there was the, box, the project for the kids that they did with the boxes. Um, so there's actually at least three projects out of it. There's also the project along Spy Pond, I don't know if that's directly related or not, where they have art in that section between the ball field and the Boys and Girls Club. Um, and that, that has happened annually for the last few years as well. But so, so you did a better, I think you did a better job explaining it than they did. Sure. I know. But I guess that, but that's my issue. point though. So we've got a couple months to just sort of say, look, you know, Here's what we did in East Arlington. This is what the actual money we raised, the projects we did. This is, you know, we know we got this corridor. Now we get two months to sort of get a general thought of what would be next. So at least we're not going again and again and again. Because I feel like, no, yeah, I mean, that, that's it. I mean, I think we can at least get a better handle on Okay, that. so should we, we should be looking for a long-term <laughs> plan on, on where this is to be going. Personally, I think putting art on the bike path is, is, uh, uh, is, is Makes no sense because it's going to be vandalized much too quick. Uh, Charlie, yeah, I, I would, I mean, I don't know if I expressed this to them before, but I, I, I would support spending fifty thousand or even twenty-five thousand if they would create a sustainable organization that would raise the money for this purpose in the future for private. But I'm concerned that going out to hire hiring a consultant to have another activity is. You know, just creating wind. I don't think that's what she was saying, though. She was saying that the consultant was doing a lot of the planning and generating um, income, the grant funding. Yeah, is it, is it possible for them to sort of come up with, like, at least put it on paper, like, what they've done? Because it sounded like they made more money than the 15000 like, through the grant. And then I, I'm guessing if they get approved for the cultural designation, that they would have more money available to them, and then maybe they could use that towards like and make it more self-sustaining. But it, they were a little disorganized, so it was, they are every year. Okay, so you're looking maybe <coughs> for a report of what they've done in the past yeah. and their finances. Yeah, because they, they have them, they know about it. They're going in the future. Yeah. 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 Okay, let me. Uh, I can't remember who made the motion. Okay, Steve, does that sound like acceptable as part of your motion, a favorable action? Yeah, sure, that's fine. Okay. Uh, any other discussion? Yeah. Try? Yeah, I move that we table it until we get the plan. Why would we vote favorable action? So we're looking for that information. Until uh, the next come back to us? Yeah. Okay, so you want them to come back? Yeah, I mean, I think. Okay. 
if we're, if we're asking for the information, they should give us the information and then the committee can decide to spend the money or not. Other? Well, yeah, well, we're, we're, okay. Uh, Mary Margaret and Carol. Well, I just think part of the issue was they're saying they're volunteers. They need a professional art, uh, art person who can evaluate and determine what the plan would be and raise the money that they are interested in providing the arts and supporting the arts, but they're volunteers, and I totally understand that. There's only so much they can do. Carol? I, you know, I think we get annoyed with them every year because there are a bunch of um, artists who don't, who aren't, you know, who don't have the same personalities. Yeah, they're not planners. They don't have our personalities. But I think by giving them the money without asking for a simple report that is a historical um, summary of what they've done in the past um, and what they hope to do going forward that they can hand out to us um, and come back and answer questions from it is a way to get them to be a little more organized rather than rewarding their disorganization. But they, I mean, I think people ha just haven't noticed that they've done a lot. They they've have, done a lot yeah. of and they're not very good at articulating it. Right. You know, so get them to put it on yeah, paper. Take some okay, so why don't we, 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 okay, could ask, we could ask one of the work products of this consultant to put that plan together, because it was pretty clear they didn't understand what we were looking for. Okay. So we may be asking them to do something that they don't know how to do. Well, so yeah, I mean, maybe we get the consultant to help to do that. Okay, then why why don't uh, why don't we do this? Is um, give them like three weeks to create the sketch of a plan. I mean, obviously, there's only so much deal uh, de detail we can uh, expect in a short period of time. Uh, so, so why don't we table this? Uh, I'll call them uh, and. Uh, explain what we're looking for, and then we'll set them up to come back and, and go through it in more detail. Is that reasonable? Mm -hmm. Okay. They have all this stuff on their website. We're looking at it here. Okay. It's not like it doesn't exist. Yeah, well, they have on their website <laughs> what they're going to come in and ask for what you want to put yeah. 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 Well, that, that could be part of it. Yeah. Well, uh, okay, so I'll, I'll, uh, I'll give them a call and ask for that. Uh, okay, let's just go through the warrant, and we've gone through a lot of it. Board of committees, uh, wooden floor. I'm just going to go through these, uh, and if you desperately want to hear, uh, have a hearing on one of these, you got to speak up. So four is parks. Assistant moderator, Article 6 is zoning, Article 7, zoning, 8 is more zoning, 9 is zoning, 10 more zoning, 11 bylaw, construction, excavation, 12 bylaw, construction, excavation, 13 more bylaws on construction, demolition, 14 or construction and demolition. Uh, 15, pride, uh, pride Commission. Okay, 16, uh, bylaw amendment, certain delinquent municipal to be lean on real estate tax account. Do you know why this is all highlighted? <laughs> I'm sorry? But do we know why this is? I don't know why it's yellow. I, I, I have a guess. It doesn't has to do with the uh, inheritance of property. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> did, didn't click is that why it's highlighted? Yeah, it didn't mm -hmm. clip off the yellow. Copy it in, that would clip off the yellow. Well, okay, I think the selectman could handle that. <coughs> 17, regulation of plastic bags. Uh, uh, 18, appraisal of town properties. 
unregistered voters to see if the town would vote to amend the bylaws to require the town to determine the value of any real estate interest before disposing of it by using procedures custom except as valid. Charlie, they're at the school. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it requires an appraisal before you can sell the land. Would they do that normally? I would think so. I mean, it's assessed. So maybe it has something to do with the uh, that uh, the veterans building. You know, uh, like somebody for the, uh, oh, you mean the one up in the Heights? No, the less than the else. The um, the the DAB. The DAB. Yeah, yeah. But that's up, up there. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The one that they that they think is worth a million dollars. Okay, the one the one that we want to put the money into the Dallas, don't we? Right. Yeah. They're gonna get a million. Well, <laughs> what did they get? Nothing. 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 I, I don't think it's even gone out to bid. Yeah, it did. It's oh, it did. Yeah. And the bid oh. was supposed to be open last week. I was wondering. Oh, I don't know. There was one bidder. Probably the guy who owns the property next door. <laughs> the minimum was, uh, I think the minimum was seven fifty. Okay. Uh, appointment, <coughs> vote appointment of town treasurer. Convert the office of town treasurer from an elected to an appointed. Uh, that was a discussion several years ago. Uh, you want to hear it? Let the selectmen deal with it. You can change your mind later if you want. Okay, Article 20, I don't understand, uh, but it's there. 21 Voter Surveillance Study Group. Form a group to study the use of surveillance technologies by town agencies to study the on privacy, civil liberties, human rights. Well, I think the selectmen could handle this. <laughs> Okay, and here's, uh, and then 22, 23, 24, 25 are the, uh, you want to do this. There has to be some financial impact. Yeah, just like there is with the Harry Barber thing. I think it's an expansion. Yeah, you can work off your property tax. Well, I think it's a good idea, but okay. it doesn't involve money. Yeah. So, yes, we should hear that and understand Show. the difference. Okay, so 24 is a voluntary. Yeah, 22 to 25, we should hear you. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah. a package. Okay, so I think the general purpose is to provide some relief, tax relief for elderly people. Okay, then we got the parks, uh, parking benefit district, and I think we'll have the manager come in and maybe discuss this also. You know, the the whole parking issue. Uh, okay, acceptance of legislation, special education reserve fund. They have to set up a uh, reserve fund within their budget. Oh, so it's not a... To take, so they don't have to go to town meeting and, and so forth. Children, I would like to talk about that one. Without further appropriation for unanticipated, unbudgeted costs. So this would be something that could roll over from yeah. year to year? So they yeah. were just giving them more money to have their coffers. <laughs> well, I mean, it sounds like instead of having a stabilization fund where they have to go to the town at town meeting, they would set aside money in this fund, which could roll over from year to year? Yeah. But mm -hmm. I understand it has to be a vote. They're not quite sure it's a vote or the selecting of so somebody to take it out of there. They just can't take it out without some kind of vote. 
Okay, Dick, could you research that, please? Well, they're going to be in here. Okay. So why not do it the same night they do the budget? Okay. Uh, Article 27. Okay, so they'll do that with the schools, local option taxes, that's our general thing. Endorsement, revolving funds, and then we're into our normal budgets, normal articles. Okay, now, we're gonna need to set up uh, hearings for what I call the biggies in March. And so, uh, the CPA, is already scheduled to come in on March 1st uh, to give theirs, so they're they're ahead of their schedule. Uh, Dick, the school committee. March 20th. Okay. Okay, Liz, you have that? March 20th for the school department. March 20th. March 20th. Yeah. So that's a Monday. I don't want, uh, Liz, I don't want anything scheduled after that. So those last three nights are basically for us to finish up all the information. So nothing scheduled after the schools. Okay, so March 20th for that, March 1st for CPA. Uh, Dick, or sorry, Steve, could you get, get Minuteman? Okay, get that going. Yeah, we did capital plan on March 13th. Uh, okay, sure. So March 13th. Okay, March 13th for the capital plan. And uh, the town manager, why don't we schedule him for March 15th? So Liz, could you give the manager a call tomorrow and ask if he could come back on March 15th to wrap up a lot of this stuff. Okay, so that we just have, so the 20th is done, the 15th done, the 13th is done. Steve, maybe if you could either get him on the 6th or the 8th. Okay, yeah, okay. okay and I think that's the last of the, of the big hearings. Okay, that's great. Uh, that time. Oh, has everybody filled in or checked their uh, no, the haven't. sheet? No, you Where is the right. sheet? Yeah. This way. This way. Well, this is an old one. It hasn't made it this way. Okay, so the three of you and then give it back. Okay, now. Yeah. Yeah, John. Did um, you find anybody, a new person for precinct one? I, I never said that. John Dice is handling that. Yeah, nobody applied. Uh, so nobody applied for that. John Dice will handle that precinct for, an, for another year. Uh, okay. Will anybody have budgets prepared for next Monday? No. Okay. Uh, will people have some budgets for next Wednesday? Well, we're having we're having a couple hearings, but I'd I'd like to know if budgets if if anybody has any budgets ready for, for Wednesday. Okay, uh, Liz, let's get together afterwards. We'll see if we can fill up that time slot. So uh, I officially declare uh, Monday's meeting is canceled. Uh, and Wednesday, uh, we have the retirement board coming in, and uh, we'll try to fill it up with. Uh, with other articles as much as we can. Uh, does anybody have a shot at having a budget for Wednesday? Okay, I would really, really, really like to have all of the budgets finished by the end of the month. So yeah, today's the... February, you mean? Yes. Okay, because mar March, a lot of the thing is all filled up with uh, with these hearings that take the whole virtually the whole night. So... Uh, uh, you know, please have these ready. If I can't get more, <coughs> if we can't get more hearings for next Wednesday, you know, and after Wednesday, uh, well, then we have the next week. But uh, 
Um, okay, Wednesday is up in the air. I'll, I'll sit down with Liz after the meeting and see if we can schedule that uh, going forward. So, uh, there, budgets. Okay, any other questions going forward? Dick? Did you have any transfers this summer? Somehow, I seem to remember there was one. Did we send, I think we got a, a request from the town clerk for, yeah. memory's going. Yeah, you got 10,500. <coughs> right, for the yeah. town clerk. Yeah. Okay, so yes, that, that's, the only, that's the only transfer that I know of. And if I don't know it, it shouldn't have happened. Okay, is there any other questions? Okay, so Monday's can't meeting is canceled. Wednesday, uh, we will hopefully have, if I have enough, if we can get enough people to come in for hearings. And then, uh, but please, you know, work on your budgets, uh, understand what's happening. Uh, and uh, we've got a couple people out with uh, uh, various illnesses and injuries and operations. So I guess the committee's getting a little older. <laughs> Any other business? Oh, Alan. C could you just um, remind everyone, especially the new people, about participation in uh, you know, public participation in campaigns for town offices? Oh, good point. Uh, just to remind everybody we're getting into election season. So uh, the Finance Committee appointing authority, which consists of the uh, myself as chairman of the Finance Committee, the uh, town moderator, and the chairman of Board of Trust Fund Commissioners, uh, has taken the policy over the last 30, 40 years that finance committee members should not participate actively and publicly in, uh, in elections. So, you know, if you want to go someplace and stuff envelopes or something like that or give less than 30 bucks or, uh, but no, nobody out holding signs, uh, nobody signing letters, uh, nobody signing, uh, uh, you know, just anything publicly, that's all. And the reason is that uh, the appointing authority considers extremely important that the that people look at the finance committee as a nonpartisan, nonpolitical body as far as the election process, uh, and I think that's very important. So please, uh, uh, if you could take that into consideration in your actions, uh, and just not do anything publicly involved with local elections. You want to get involved in state and federal. You want to get involved in override or debt exclusion. That's fine. It's just not the local elections. Okay, is there any other business? Okay, yeah, if you can give that to Liz. Oh, good religion? Yeah. Okay, meeting adjourned.